Hi, so we're about to pull the oil seals on this 2008 uh, 90 horsepower Evinrude E-Tech engine. The seals are inside there around the prop shaft. Now to get this out we've got to pull this bearing carrier here and that's going to involve the use of a puller. So pull your prop and then you take these two bolts out here and behind the bolt there's like a little retaining clip that just keeps the bearing carrier in place. So, my puller legs are too short and I try to extend them by just putting a, a nut on and join them two together. It's not going to cut mustard, it's not going to be strong enough so I'm going to have to weld the two together. Predictably, I've encountered a problem. I couldn't get the puller to fit in, and I tried to extend it using those long, longer bolts, but they just snapped off as soon as I put any pressure on them. So what I've done, I've welded the small foot onto this big extension piece from the bigger set of pullers. But I'm going to have to modify this further and cut a little slot in there so it fits in the top part of the puller itself. Then I've ground this groove, or like a a notch out of each side so that it'll fit inside the puller. Now hopefully this will be strong enough. I'm not going to lie and say that was easy because it wasn't. There was a BRP factory put up for this job. Now you can see, look, the bear and carrier o ring itself is not in great shape. I wouldn't be surprised if that was what was letting the water in. And there's an updated o-ring and it's brown, this one's black. So this is obviously the original and this was a known failure point on these engines. Bear in itself is good. So in the next job we've got to get the lower unit off to get it inside to do the water pump. Um, it's quite easy to take lower unit off in this. There's just one, two, three, four bolts there. There's a bigger bolt there, and there's another one underneath the trim tab. When you take the trim tab off, make a note of, where the alignment, of what the alignment is, so that you don't mess it up. So a unit hanging on by a couple of bolts. What you need to do is disconnect the shift rod. There's a shift rod just there, look. So what to do, and ask me how I did, how I know this. Leave it in reverse, and then disconnect it in reverse, and reconnect it in reverse. Otherwise, you end up getting your shift rod adjustment out and then the throw of the gears is not correct. You've got to take the left hand side of the lower engine cover off and then the shift rod bolt is just in there.
What have you do? Don't turn that. Make sure that doesn't move that there and then your shift adjustment will stay the same. So here's the two oil seals, or here's one of the two oil seals that I've just pulled out of the bearing carrier. Now to get these out, the easiest way is just to um, put a cloth over the side and then very carefully just feel for underneath. Just feel for underneath the oil seal and then just lever it up, turn it round, lever it up, turn it round, lever it up, turn it round. And then once it's sticking out of the carrier just a tiny bit, like so, you just get a, ch a chisel and just put it on top of there and just give it a little tap just to bend the oil seal in a bit and that'll, that'll make it much easier to get it out. Now there's two of these that go in back to back. Now what I've done, I've just cleaned out the housing to make sure that it's going to get a good seal and I'm going to use some adhesive to make sure that um, we've got no oil running past there. Just make sure the part is clean. Now the needle bearings inside, I've given them a grease with some molly lube. Just to make sure they're in good condition. They feel fine. They go around the prop shaft but they go in like that back to back. Now this is what I'm gonna use just around the outside of the seal where it sits against the housing just to be a hundred percent obviously be careful you don't get any of this into the needle bearing Gonna use my finger just to make sure, like I said, none of that gets onto the bearing itself. I'll just grease the inside of the oil seal with um, a little bit of molly lube. We'll just pop that one in. And remember, these go in back to back. Then we're just gonna use a socket to push that into place. Grease those in my lube as well. I think what we'll do is just have a little bit of triple guard around the outside. There you go. Just giving the prop shaft a light rub with some very, very fine grit sandpaper. Just to make sure it hasn't picked up any burrs or anything when anybody's been messing around with it. These oil seals have been have been off before. And if there's a nick on the prop as it's turned around at really high speed, it's just going to destroy the, the rubber oil seal. So and make sure it's nice and smooth. Feels good. 
Okay, now for the water pump. So the water pump housing itself has got four, I think they're 13 mil bolts. Got a complete water pump kit. Do the whole thing. It's even got new um, bolts. It's a gasket for the housing. It's got everything new. Put the O-ring into this housing here. Now this cup gets a seal of gasket adhesive around the outside. And that locks into position in a little groove in there. Lightly coat the inside of the liner with triple guard grease. The water pump housing, it says put, the, put some adhesive and then install this weird shaped o-ring into here. And how do you do that? Okay, next, apply gasket seal compound to both sides of the impeller plate gasket. Okay, install the gasket and the impeller plate. So presumably gasket first and then impeller plate. Gasket goes like that. Like that. It's on both sides of the gasket, apparently. pump housing itself um, we've applied gasket sealant on the inside we've stuck the gasket on and then applied more gasket sealant and then the water pump housing plate itself so next will be the impeller oh, probably first an o-ring right apply triple guard grease to the new impeller o-ring okay triple guard grease to this Slide the o-ring down the drive shaft halfway over the installed impeller key. Ah. To temporarily hold key in place, okay. So only halfway over that groove there. Alright, I see what happens. And that goes that way. So there's a groove on there to stop this coming out, that has to go up. That goes in there like so. Right, that's it. So you temporarily use the O ring to hold that key in place while you slide on the impeller. Okay, 
it, that's it. So it just wiggles into position. So, gasket sealing compound on those. goes that way. So this should be anti-clockwise. So you just rotate the impeller a little bit as you pressing down on the housing and if you get it right it should just pop in. But rotate it anti-clockwise so facing the engine or facing the back of the engine put the impeller in anti-clockwise Okay, so we've got our impeller into its housing. We'll put these new bolts in with some triple guard grease. I don't have a torque wrench available, so Bear in mind this is an aluminium casing, just be really careful when you're talking up the bolts. Alright, that's everything, oops, that's everything reinstalled as per the instructions. The next we've got some molly lube here for the splines on the end of the drive shaft. Okay, next we're going to go and put this back onto the engine itself and then reinstall the bearing carrier and hopefully that's job done. So here's the bearing carrier back in, it was easy enough. I just used this piece of wood and I just tapped it in and then you put the two little clips back in and then there's two bolts to hold it in place. Put the prop back on and we'll see how it goes. Alright, it's all back together. Um, I'm just going to put some oil in. Remember to change the little nylon washers on the oil drain plugs.